We wanted to find a lane in the central business district of the City of Melbourne that we could do a large street art project in. We looked at many lanes, all through the labyrinth of lanes in the city, and came up with Union Lane for various reasons. Firstly, it was a very heavily tagged and vandalised lane that wasn't being used very much by the public, and it was a great opportunity to really enhance this lane and to improve the quality of the, the thoroughfare. It's a great location. It runs between Melbourne's most prominent shopping retail area and laneways that are closed for pedestrian access at lunchtime. So really a, a great area for the general public to interact with the artwork. So when Union Lane was chosen, um, the first step was to contact the owners of the buildings of the walls and to seek them out to see if they would consider allowing a street art permit process. So the two sides of the lane, David Jones and the Walk Arcade, both agreed to having the murals painted on the walls. We filled out a formal application that was then submitted to the City of Melbourne. And then we had to give an idea of what sort of thing we would be painting on it and then had to wait for the process to begin. Before we could paint in Union Lane, we had to get permission to remove a 30-year-old mural that had been heavily vandalised, sought permission from the artist and that was fine. And then before we could start putting our new work on it, we had to have the wall buffed and the Department of Justice has teams of graffiti cleaners working in conjunction with the City of Melbourne and a crew came over two days and painted the wall sort of neutral shades to give us a basis. While all this was going on, um, we were putting the word out to participants to see who would want to come in. We were aiming for young people between the age of 13 to, say, 30. And we did this in various ways. We went through the sort of formal City of Melbourne Youth Services Network, where um, emails and talks were given at forums so that people could tell their own clients about it and who might want to come along to that. And also we created an artist blog beyond the cctv.blogspot.com. And through the blog, we advertised the project and what was going to happen. And for those people that wanted to, could simply come along down to the lane during the informal workshop sessions, register in and start to paint. I came to the project due to my experience in street art and having done another street art landware project just recently off Little Lonsdale Street. I mobilized my network of artists and um, sent an email out to everyone, targeted certain artists to act as mentors for the younger ones that we expected to come along. Over the um, eight days we painted, we had probably up to 50 different artists that came along and participated. In terms of paint, we decided to go with belt and molotovs because artists prefer working with it because it covers nicely, it doesn't run. It is a good quality paint. The rule of thumb is one can per square meter, so we had quite a large area to cover. The trick really was on the day to kind of um, manage um, the painting in such a way that first of all was safe for the artists to work, secondly also that it would be safe for the general public who came around to have a look. One thing we wrote up on the blog was a set of codes of behaviour, rules of engagement, which was a list of really obvious things but uh, we made that apparent before everyone came down on the wall so obviously no drinking no substance abuse and then to do with the nature of the artwork nothing that had you know political sexual or racial um, implications and then there were the sort of unwritten rules which you know don't nick the paint and equipment um, don't go over each other's work and respect each other when you're working in a small environment like that and generally, um, over the time, we had no problems with these things. It was great. Lots of people found us through the uh, emailing networks and the blog and so on. But quite a few people found us just by word of mouth and just coming past the project. 
We had big signage up at each end of the project so the public knew what was going on. The public were free to walk down through the laneway and watch the artists working. And quite a few artists came down to check out what was going on and ended up staying. We had quite a few people from interstate and international artists who just ended up working with the young local people. So it was a great opportunity for the artists to meet each other, see each other's styles and to network and talk about other street art projects. I think one of the great things that happened was because we chose not to um, restrict the laneway to public access, we ended up having a huge amount of the public coming down through the lane and we had nothing but an interesting uh, dialogue going on between the artists and the public. We had nothing but a good response and it was an opportunity, as lots of people from the public pointed out, that they don't normally come into contact with street artists and being able to stand there and see how they applied the paint and how they actually built up an image, many people from the public found fascinating.